Welcome to the latest episode of the B-Movie Club. This is your host, Kevin. This week we're going to be discussing the 1993 sci-fi action comedy classic, Demolition Man, starring Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, and a young Sandra Bullock. For those of you guys just joining us for the first time, the B-Movie Club is like a book club. I'll post on Facebook and Twitter what our movie will be early in the week. You can send in your questions, comments, any favorite quotes or favorite scenes, and I'll be sure to discuss it on the show. Um, I want you guys to know that it's not all fun and games here at the B-Movie Club. This is serious business. This is hard work. I subjected myself on Netflix to the Weird Al Yankovic movie, UHF, and also Transylvania 65000 starring Jeff Goldblum. As I said, it's not all fun and games. Um, sometimes I'm kind of torn between what movies I should do. So I'll see a movie, I'm like, oh yeah, it's supposed to be funny, and I'll check it out. And not so much. Not so much. I mean, what seemed kind of funny when you were 8 years old, not so funny when you're 36. That's uh, one to grow on. Good things to remember. <laughs> Transylvania 65000 was so bad I was reading the reviews on it it was like though it was short on laughs it was tall on the, in the sense that the cast averaged the height of 6 feet 3 inches tall so that's good to know anyway we will not be reviewing either one of those movies so don't send in letters requesting them if you could um, again this week Demolition Man from 1993 it is the future in 1996. Los Angeles is a war-torn hellhole of violence and destruction. Who would have known they could have so accurately predicted the way things turned out years later? Anyway, uh, John Spartan, played by Sylvester Stallone, is the top cop in the area. He's called the Demolition Man because in kind of a self-parody of the movies he's been in up to this point, He's the guy who gets the job done, but not without destroying everything in his path. So there you go. His villain in this movie is Simon Phoenix, played by Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes is this uh, crazed gang leader, psychopath, who has his own army down in South Central. And they go head to head. What can I tell you? Uh, Spartan invades Simon Phoenix's lair to rescue a busload of people who've been hijacked by Phoenix. Um, in the conflagration that occurs, uh, the buildings are destroyed, um, and the people are found, people from the bus are found dead. So, Simon Phoenix is hauled away, but so is John Spartan. Because of his crazed uh, demolition man routine where things get blown up, they think he unwittingly uh, caused the death of the people as well. So he's uh, hauled away as well. Now in 1996, wink wink, what they do is they don't just throw you in the slammer. There's this new process called cryostasis where they basically freeze you for however many years your sentence is. <clears throat> and they put these things on your brain to affect your synapses and in effect rehabilitate you. So years passed. Now it's really, really the future. It is 2036 and it's kind of a uh, quasi benevolent uh, totalitarian dictatorship where everybody's happy and nice but there are many things that they're not allowed to do anymore. In one scene Sandra Bullock who plays Lieutenant Lenina Huxley of the San Angeles Police Department in the future there's no longer Los Angeles because after the big one of 2010, wink wink, uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, and Santa Barbara all merged into one giant city, evidently 500 miles long, uh, called San Angeles. And they say that <laughs> there's a long list of things that are illegal. Salt, uh, fatty foods, uh, contact sports, even swearing is illegal. You'll get fined if you swear. It's a, a moral, verbal morality statute, is what they call it. Um, somehow, Simon Phoenix has escaped from the cryostasis prison, and he's on the loose, causing ruckus. 
Now, because of these, uh, this dictatorship, there is no crime anywhere. So the cops are basically kind of worthless because they haven't had to deal with anything like this before. Simon Phoenix is on a rampage, and the only way they think to deal with him is to release Spartan also from the cryostasis prison because he was the last guy who was able to deal with Phoenix. Um, so they get him out, but again, um, his method of police, you know, his method of police uh, procedure is much different than the people of this day and age. Uh, at one point, uh, they're trying to figure out where Simon Phoenix is going to go. And then Spartan says, well, he's going to go for a gun. Well, the only place you could even look at a gun would be in a museum. So, of course, that's where they go. And there's a big battle there. We find out that Simon Phoenix was released from prison on purpose. Spoiler alert. The head of the Society of San Angeles, a man named Cocteau, um, released Phoenix in order to get rid of his rival. Beneath the streets of San Angeles lived these people called Scraps, who essentially did not buy into the whole, you know, no salt, no swearing thing, and decided to live underground because they cherished their freedom. It's that age-old question of, you know, freedom of choice versus freedom of, freedom from pain, essentially. Yeah, it's very philosophical. So they decide to live beneath the ground, but it's dirty, it's a sewer, there isn't a lot of food. So there's constant butting of heads between these two societies. So Cocteau released Simon Phoenix to kill the leader of the scraps below, a man named Edgar Friendly, played by ever-popular Dennis Leary. Um, so... Spartan get, figures this out. He's after Simon Phoenix. Simon Phoenix gets it so that other criminals are released. There's a big battle at the cryostasis facility. One thing leads to another. Our hero prevails. So there you go. Um, Demolition Man is streaming instantly on Netflix. This movie is really... Um, it's got a lot of action in it. But for my money, it's just kind of funny. The, the best parts of the movie are kind of the the weird way that people talk to each other because it's all very, uh, it's a little too sanitized. Um, they constantly go like, be well, and they kind of wave at each other because people are not used to contact greetings. At one point he shakes hands with somebody, people freak out. Um, the people who release Spartan um, from the cryostasis actually kind of thumb their nose at him as well. They think of him like he's a crow magnon, like he's some kind of weird caveman. At one point, uh, a lady turns to him, Stallone, and says, like, what would you say if I thought you were a fossil from a decayed era, you know, for most likely that should be forgotten? And he turns to her and he goes, I don't know, thank you, because he's Stallone, and that's how he rolls. That was my Stallone impression, by the way. Obviously, it needs some work. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things about this movie. Again, it was made in 1993, which is kind of like the tail end of Stallone's comeback. Um... As you know, he was a big star in the 80s and the late 70s. And he kind of dipped um, in the late 80s um, after he released such movies as Stop It or My Mom Will Shoot. Um, but then he came back in the early 90s with Cliffhanger and Demolition Man, which kind of reaffirmed his status. By the late 90s, he was off the cliff again. Uh, Wesley Snipes, up to this point, had been in kind of comedy movies, uh, White Men Can't Jump, things like that. But he'd also done uh, New Jack City um, more recently, he'd started to establish himself as kind of an action star. So this is one of the first things that he did where he was a villain. Um, where he was like the heroic villain. Uh, interestingly enough, originally the script was meant for Steven Seagal and Jean-Claude Van Damme. But neither one of them wanted to play the villain, so they both dropped out. Then they offered it to Stallone, who readily accepted. And he actually suggested that Jackie Chan should play the Simon Phoenix character. Um, Jackie Chan didn't want to do it because in China, um, the movie fans hate it when their heroes play the villains, so he bailed out. At that point, they offered it to Wesley Snipes, and he was happy to do it. Wesley Snipes, uh, in this movie as Simon Phoenix, didn't have his mustache, which was kind of different from him. Usually he had his mustache in most of the movies I'd ever seen him in. But he also had his crazy bleach blonde hairstyle, which, you may know, went on to inspire Dennis Rodman's whole look. 
essentially, when he was with the San Antonio Spurs at that time, he suddenly had the bleach blonde afro styled up that way, which went, you know, then he went on to kind of do other things with it. But there you go. Um, so, Sandra Bullock, not a huge star at this point. You know, she was kind of an unknown. And in fact, a different actress was hired to play the role of Lenina Huxley, Lori Petty, who you might remember was in um, Point Break. Uh, she was in Tank Girl. She dropped out um, relatively early in the process, and she was replaced by Sandra Bullock. So there you go. Good to know. Um, I always enjoy watching these movies would take place in the future and to see kind of the, the parallels that happen. Uh, at one point, um, they're talking about how uh, all of uh, John Spartan's exploits were currently held at the Arnold Schwarzenegger Presidential Library. And they had this long thing about, what? Are you kidding me? He went on to be president? Of course, we all know he went on to become governor of California. And... Uh, you know, there were some Republicans at that time who thought they should write another own amendment so you didn't have to be a natural-born American citizen to become president. So who knows what may happen in the future? Cross your fingers. Uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, Sandra Bullock's character, Lenina Huxley, her name Lenina comes from the book Brave New World, written by Aldous Huxley. So there you go. See? All sorts of interesting facts you don't get anywhere else. Um... Uh, Anyway, I really enjoy this movie. I think this movie is a hoot. I typically uh, appreciate movies that have a good dose of comedy mixed in. Um, other actors who you've seen in this, you've got Rob Schneider, uncredited. And he has a bunch of lines in it. So it's like, there's Rob Schneider. Um, the voice of the mainframe computer is actually Adrian Barbeau, also uncredited. Who you might remember her from movies like The Fog, Escape from New York, and Swamp Thing. Um, so... I highly recommend it. It is streaming instantly on Netflix. It got a 68% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought it was better than that. I don't know. Uh, there's lots of little things that they added into it to kind of create the society that they were going for. There's a lot of references to Taco Bell because that was every restaurant's Taco Bell in the future somehow. So there you go. Um, anyway, next week we'll be doing... The comedy classic from 1974, The Longest Yard, starring Burt Reynolds. Not the one with Adam Sandler, no thank you. The original from 74. And it's especially weird because just like Wesley Snipes shaved off his mustache in The, in the Longest Yard, Burt Reynolds doesn't have a mustache. What's up with that? It's like Samson cutting his hair or something. Anyway, it is streaming instantly on Netflix, so check it out. Send in your questions and comments. You can, of course, reach me on Twitter at KD9575. You can reach me on YouTube at The Bee Movie Club. Please post any questions or comments there. And don't forget to click subscribe. Also, um, I hope you've checked out the new Facebook page, Bee Movie Club. You can look for it at Facebook slash Original Bee Movie Club. Feel free to like that and tell a friend. I'm always trying to get more people watching the show. Anyway, thank you for joining us. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out-of-context quote, and here it is. Excuse me, citizen. What seems to be your boggle? Thank you for joining us, and be well. Be well is actually from Demolition Man as well. I know you guys were all very curious as to why I see be well at the end of every, every episode. And that's why. Good times. Bye-bye.